Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching Webpack for Beginners tutorial lesson one. Okay, so before you get started, you need to know a couple of things first of all. The first being JavaScript, and this is absolutely essential because we are going to be using that quite a lot as we go on. So if you don't know any of that, check out my JavaScript for Beginners playlist first of all before you start this. I'll leave the link to that down below. Secondly, you need to know, or rather you don't need to know, but we are going to be using a little bit of CSS, SAS and HTML. So it is going to benefit you if you do know that, and I'm guessing if you want to learn Webpack, then you probably do know those. In case you don't, I've got playlists on all three, so I'll leave the link to those down below as well. Okay, so the rest of this video is going to concentrate on how to use the course files and the different tools I'm going to be using throughout this series, as well as talking a little bit at the end about what Webpack is for and why it's so good. So if you want to skip straight ahead into installing Webpack, then go ahead to the next video. Otherwise, this is the repo which contains all the different course files for this playlist. So it's private at the minute, but I am going to make it public before I upload this video. And you can find it at this URL, which I'll leave down below as well. So it's split up into different branches and each branch corresponds to the starting point of each lesson in this video. So we're on lesson one. So we're going to be using these files right here, which I'm going to show you how to clone in your desktop shortly. Now, if you want to clone them along with me and use Git, then you're going to need to install Git. So you can get it from this address right here. I'll leave the link to that down below as well and just click download, go through the installation steps, dead simple, and then you can use those git commands along with me. Otherwise, you can also just download it to your desktop by clicking this button right here. So what I wanna do is copy this address now so we can use it later because that's what we're gonna to use to clone this repo in our computer. So we do also need Node.js installed as well to install Webpack, and that's because we need the Node package manager for that. So to do that, go to nodejs.org and install the latest version right there. Just go through the installation steps, don't change anything, and it's all gonna install on your computer along with Node Package Manager, or NPM for short. If you wanna learn more about Node.js, I've got a series on that as well, which I'll leave the link to down below. And the description at this rate is just gonna be a series of links. <laughs> anyway, install that. And then finally, I am gonna use Atom as my text editor in this series, and that's because it's free and it's really cool. So there's a couple of packages which I'm gonna show you for Atom as well, which are gonna be really helpful in this series. But to download it, all you need to do is go to atom.io and click this button right here. Okay, so I'm in Atom, and I'm gonna open up the settings by pressing Control and Comma. And I'm gonna show you the different packages that I'm using for this series, two of them anyway. So the first one, if I click on Packages, is the Atom Live Server. And if I click on this, you can see that down here, if I click Control Shift 3, it's going to spin up a local server for me on port 3000 and we're going to use that to serve the files to the user okay so if i go back to packages again the other one that i've installed and i want to show you is this thing right here platform io ide terminal and that gives me this thing right here so i can type git commands in here and webpack commands and other things as well so that's going to make it easy for us instead of using the command prompt all the time which looks really ugly so if you want to download those, just go to install in your settings and search for them right there. Okay, so what I want to do is clone the repo right here. So to do that, I'm going to navigate to the folder above, which is NetNinja right here. This is just an empty folder at the minute. And I'm going to say git clone, and then I'm going to paste this URL that we copied from the repo before. And then I'm going to hit enter, and that's going to go ahead grab that repository and clone it all right here. And you can see that new folder now has appeared. It's got that little Git icon, which says it's a repo. And then all these different files right here. Now, this has downloaded the master branch, which is the end result, the final files of the whole series. We want to start at lesson one, the first branch. So to get there, what well, all we need to do is say CD, oops, down here, CD. We need to go into this directory right here where the repo is. So it's webpack hyphen playlist and then we'll say git checkout and we use checkout to check out a particular branch and the branch name is going to be lesson hyphen one so what that's going to do is check out lesson one branch for us and update this code tree right here to show us the code in that branch so that's the starting point for this tutorial and all we have in it at the minute is this git ignore file which is just going to ignore any node modules and the distribution folder which we're going to create later on 
It's also got an index.html file, uh, the license, and a readme, which has pretty much nothing in it anyway. Okay, so index.html, let's open this simple index file. So finally, we can start talking about Webpack and what it's good for. So how many times have you seen this? We have an index file where we've got all these different scripts being loaded in and many times, many more than this, we could have 20 different scripts loading in. Now that is not great for performance because every time a user goes to the website and requests these different things, it's gonna make however many different requests, five in this case, bam, 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 to the server, which is gonna slow down your website, decrease its performance, and it's just generally not good practice. So ideally what we want is just one script file or two maybe, and we can use Webpack to bundle these different uh, script files into that one file. Okay, that's what it's really good for in its most basic form. So I'm going to show you that in the next tutorial, but it can also do different things. So anyway, Webpack. In a nutshell, Webpack takes all of our assets and it outputs them to a production ready bundle, which is going to reduce HTTP requests and just speed up the site performance. Okay. So it does that by bundling up that, uh, those JavaScript files, like I said, into one file and minimizing the HTTP requests. We can also use Webpack to process SAS or less files into CSS, and then we can modularize our CSS into different components, if you like, and only use the CSS that we need where we need it. We can also use Webpack to convert JSX, which is used with React, or ES2015, the new features in that, into vanilla JavaScript, which browsers can then understand because they can't understand these things by default, or a lot of these things, okay? So that's why Webpack is so good and it's why you should be using it in your front end projects. So we're gonna start in the next tutorial by bundling these scripts or just a couple of scripts into one file. And I'm gonna show you how we can do that and also show you how we can install Webpack as well. So there we go. That is your introduction to Webpack. Don't forget to subscribe and like to catch all the updates and I'll see you in the next video.